All right, some folk customs. As we skip around here, we've got marriage customs, death customs. All societies have their various customs. We still have ours. We don't often think of them as folk customs. And as we enter the 21st century, we tend to become more homogenized, where everybody sort of does things the same way over much of the country. But you don't have to go too many years back where you did have more distinct folk customs surrounding these basic passages of life that we have, uh, and some of them had to do with marriage. Has anybody ever been to an in-fair dinner? An in-fair was generally something that took place uh, the day after a wedding. Now, we're talking about the days before honeymoons, when you know the honeymoon was plowing a field or something like that, but... Uh, this in fairs were very common into the 20th century in the Ozarks. They were often held at a uh, at the the house of the family of the groom. Uh, the day after the wedding, you get together and have this big dinner. Again, in the middle of the day, a sort of dinner. That's when you have dinner in the Ozarks, and uh, you would and it was called an in fair. I'm not really sure where the the word in fair comes from, uh, but these became pretty common affairs where the entire family would come, extended family would come, and I've seen photographs uh, of in-fair dinners where it looked like there were 50 people uh, outside of a little house. And in these cases, you would usually eat out of doors because most people in the Ozarks didn't have a house that big. Maybe part of the reason they tended to get married in warm weather. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, in-fair dinners were, were pretty common. Uh, also common, and you still hear about these every once in a while, the chivalry, the chivalry or chivalry. Uh, this was a, uh, a custom that was long practiced in the Ozarks that has roots all the way back into the Middle Ages of Europe, uh, specifically in France with the, uh, the name uh, chivalry. And uh, the, the Cajuns still practice the chivalry, I understand. But in the Ozarks, it was always known as a chivalry. Mm -hmm. What did people do at a chivalry? This is a, actually a, a painting of a chivalry. I think this one is uh, set in Louisiana somewhere, maybe in Cajun country somewhere. But Millie's right. A chivalry is basically just pestering the dickens out of newlyweds. It's usually done on the night of the, the wedding. Again, in the days before honeymoons and maybe what sparked honeymoons, let's get out of here so these <laughs> devils will leave us alone. But you, and, and it's, it's always done at night, and you usually wait, you know, uh, some, right, wait till, you know, maybe uh, an intimate moment. And a part of the purpose is to, is to, it's to disturb whatever's happening, you know, in the, in the newlywed bedroom. And just in general, it's, a, it's another opportunity uh, for men, especially for young men, but uh, women can participate in these too, to get out and raise cane and, uh, and you know, maybe get drunk. Uh, that would be part of it for You some. don't leave until they feed you. And that's, uh, that is part of the old tradition, is that you're, you're wanting them to present you with food. And so for people who were used to this in the Ozarks, usually they would have something ready. They, they, would, they would be waiting. Now, eventually the shivarees get sometimes can get a little rough. And nowadays, I'm not sure how much food is involved, but when, when it happens nowadays, a lot of times the end goal is to throw the groom in a creek or in a pond or something like that. It's the, you know, it's the cause some kind of havoc like that. And not necessarily do anything to the to the bride, but especially especially if it's if it's young men, the friends. A lot of times it'll be the friends of the groom, brothers or something like that. Ride a rail. Ride, ride a rail. Oh, a little rail. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ride them around. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, well. Here's a, and this is this is kind of neat. Uh, 
And Butcher wanted to know where I get all this stuff. This actually came out of an archive in, in Columbia. But this is a, a really uh, unique letter. Uh, it's one of the few detailed descriptions of a 19th century Ozark chivalry that I've ever come across. And this guy, as we'll see, was not happy about it. Uh, this was a, a letter written in 1888. And the, the, the letter, I'm not going to read the whole thing, so it's a long letter. Uh, the, the letter writer is a fellow named G.B. Schubert. And according to the letterhead, he was the, uh, the collector of Camden County. And Camden County is up in the Lake of the Ozarks area. Uh, not the, my name is Earl Camden County. You remember that show? Uh, but Schubert, and he's, he's writing to a former governor of Missouri named J.W. McClurg, who also lived in, in Camden County. And they, they obviously knew each other from Republican political circles and that kind of stuff. So he writes, Dear Sir and Friend, uh, let's see, your kind letter of the 18th came to hand last night. I sincerely thank you for the interest you have shown in this matter, and we'll see what the matter is. But you are not uh, acquainted with the facts of the matter. I'm reading the original handwriting here, so I'll, I'll try to get through this. The object of the crowd, uh, the, the shivery crowd, was to take Mr. Agee out and put him in the creek. This was their intention beyond the possibility of a doubt. It has been acknowledged that when my wife and Mrs. McIntyre were putting the bride to bed, this sounds kind of like a, some sort of middle-aged custom, but that apparently these two women were preparing the bride for her, you know, her marriage bed. Uh, there were some of the hoodlums listening at the door and trying to pry in at the windows. We had expected them to come and had refreshments to treat the crowd, so they had the, the food ready to, to ward off the, the hooligans. You know, here's, here's your food, now get out of here, that kind of thing. But instead of coming in like men, the first thing we know, or the first thing we knew, they were at the back side of the house firing guns, ringing bells, beating on the house, throwing gravel against the windows, and rocks on the roof of the house. My wife and Mrs. McIntyre's children were terrified. They, they then ran around the house more like demons than men, and, through the front, and though the front door was opened for them to come in, they still kept it up. And going around the third time, I could stand it no longer and went for them, and I only went for them barehanded. It is said that I fired a shotgun at them, which is false. I have not owned a gun of any kind for six years, nor... I had not borrowed any, nor there was, there was not gun in the house of any kind except Smith & Wesson revolvers. I'm not sure how that, I mean, he obviously owns Smith & Wesson. <laughs> yeah, that's not a gun, but, you know, let's, uh, semantics here. Uh, which show for themselves that the cartridges have not been disturbed for six months at least. So he's denying the rumors that he shot at these shivery guys. The next day at school, my son George learned that it had been made up to run around the house three times and then, and then break in the door of my daughter's room and take Mr. A.G. out and dunk him. If it had went to that, someone would have been killed. There is more in it than I can, than I can write. The thing was first gotten up by some parties here who knew who, or who know that I will not submit to such an insult for the purpose of working it, working it against me. And later he actually uh, uh, calls this an infair, or not an infair, a chivalry, and uh, goes into a little more detail on this. He spells a chivalry, C-H-I-V-E-R-E-E, -E -E. uh, but it's a, it's a really interesting letter. And this guy obviously had not gotten over uh, his anger uh, for having to, to go through this, this chivalry. Uh, 